Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, Professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I sit on the Board of Trustees at the North American Menopause Society. I'm joined today by Dr. Cynthia Stunkel, who is an internist, endocrinologist, and reproductive endocrinologist in California, but really you have focused on menopause pretty much your entire career. So if I'm a midlife woman, and I'm leaving my sixth decade, and I'm on hormones, shouldn't I stop? So by leaving your sixth decade, you mean you're entering now 61, into your 60s. Mm -hmm. We have in the past thought that it was most prudent for women to stop at these ages. But the facts are, when as we work with women, we realize that there are a number of women who just have either relentless symptoms that don't respond to some of the other prescription therapies that we have available, or they just feel better when they take hormone therapy. So if I can stay on it, if my physician lets me stay on it, because so many doctors won't let their patients stay on mm -hmm. hormones, is that wrong? What type of risk am I taking? We, uh, the, the, so there are several concerns, largely in the category of heart disease, stroke, and then breast cancer. So we just know that as women age, if they start hormone therapy in their 60s and 70s, we know their risk of stroke and heart attack is increased. What we don't know for sure is if they start in their 50s and continue on, if there will be a cross point when the effects of age interfere with some of the beneficial effects of hormones. So I think women who, for example, have high blood pressure or potentially elevated cholesterol levels um, have been taking an oral therapy might be wise to talk with their provider about switching to a transdermal therapy, a patch or a gel, because we think these are um, what I like to call more metabolically friendly um, in the fact that they don't contribute to some of the increased clotting concerns, uh, lipid concerns, um, inflammation concerns. So are there better choices than others as we women hit our sixth decade and so and can't get off the hormone therapies or don't want to get off the hormone therapies? Can we be reassured? Well, Dr. Shapiro, some of what our practice is now is based on what we call um, expert or consensus opinion because we really don't have the scientific studies of sufficient length and strength to really answer all those questions for women. But very seasoned clinicians experienced in these matters feel most comfortable advising women to, if possible, lower their dose, potentially switch from an oral therapy to a transdermal therapy, though these aren't even absolute necessities, and then just monitor carefully risks for breast cancer and for heart disease um, while they're taking them. So as a patient, what should I have done to follow me, to reassure me? Well, the first thing is to just have that annual conversation with your provider. Let's, you know, I'm feeling good. I want to continue this. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how is my health looking? Um, certainly, we recommend that women have an annual mammogram because we know that breast cancer risk increases with age. And so keeping an eye on breast health, uh, just the usual uh, heart and um, vascular evaluation, what's happening with blood pressure, what's happening with um, cholesterol, what's happening with uh, blood sugar, is there any risk of diabetes? And um, monitoring those things in general are pretty good measures of health. And then just uh, being aware that this is uh, a little bit skating on thin and thinner ice as age increases, but there's no question that some women find this a very important um, a very important way to maintain their health and well-being. We always used to hear the lowest dose for the shortest period of time. Is it now true that we're hearing more of an appropriate dose for the appropriate patient for the appropriate length of time? That language has been shifting, but I just think that women and their providers need to know that we're taking a common sense approach, but we're not necessarily supported by the kind of strong data that we might like to have. And in the end, for those women over the age of 65 who are doing well and continue to be monitored, can they breathe a sigh of relief that this is okay? Well, I think what they certainly could do is if their clinician isn't aware, they could tell them that groups like the North American Menopause Society, the Endocrine Society, and the American College of OBGYN um, all agree that in individual cases that this has been decreed that it's okay to continue. And I think that should give both women and their providers some ease. Thank you so much. Thank you.